about some beasts that have not been dealt with that need to be dealt with and there shall be a turning point because there is deliverance of a man because there is deliverance of a man but there is also deliverance of a city in this conference more than just delivering of a man we are going to deal with delivering of a city deliverance of a nation somebody can be anointed to deliver people but it takes a higher anointing to deliver an entire city that's what we need to address today somebody say amen father son and spirit we give your name the praise the glory and the honor your name is excellent your name is powerful your name is holy name above all names Jesus Christ the son of the living God the name given among all men whereby we must be saved we come in none other name we come in none other name but in the only matchless name of your son Jesus Christ for none other reason but to exclusively magnify we invoke your power to descend down in this building we take authority over the whole region round about we seize the atmosphere we dethrone every head of every principality in Uganda in the mighty name of Jesus marshal your angels release ministering spirits and flames of fire all the way through this conference I pray that even in this very service that your very power shall descend down so mightily in this place I give charge over unto angels of God to begin moving in the whole realm wherein we stand I arrest any agent of hell on assignment Holy Spirit we give you freedom to move in this place we give you preeminence to do what you need to do speak unto us a Rama word out of this the logos word of God in the matchless name of Jesus as a servant I decree that you may increase and that your name may be glorified in Jesus mighty name you may take your sit in the presence of the living God. Somebody shout amen. Ladies and gentlemen, I want us to understand something. Something out of the scriptures. Out of the word of the living God. The Bible speaketh about a war in the heavenlies. And there was a war in the heavenlies. Michael and his angels fought. And the dragon and his angels also fought the battle had been prophesied by John the Revelator this battle has been going on for such a very long time I want to remind you ladies and gentlemen in Luke chapter 10 verse number 18 that Jesus said unto the disciples I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven Lucifer fell a long time ago. Lucifer, but I don't want you to despise the enemy you're dealing with. The enemy you're dealing with, he's a master at spiritual warfare. 
He's been fighting this war for billions of years. The earth has been in existence for billions of years. Even ar ar archaeology confirms that. Even Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah confirms that. But the existence of mankind upon the face of the earth it's been just a little over 6,000 years. 4,000 years from Adam up to the birthing of Christ. And 2,018 years from the birthing of Christ until now. To be exact, it is 6,018 years since Adam walked upon the face of the earth. But the angels of God had been in existence for a very long time, way before mankind walked upon the face of the earth. And the enemy you're dealing with has been fighting this battle for a very, very long time. He has fought humanity whereby even mankind Adam and Eve sinned against God how does the devil fight he doesn't fight with physical weapons he is a spirit therefore the Bible also reminds us I believe it is in 2nd Corinthians 10 verse number 3 and verse number 4 that though we walk after the flesh we do not war after the flesh for the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal but mighty in God for the pulling down of strongholds casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of Christ bringing every thought into captivity and having a readiness to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled he says though you and I are a physical body we have a physical body but the, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal they are not physical weapons you can fight the devil by arguing with him hallelujah hallelujah you cannot fight your enemy when you're just abusing a Christian you fight your battles on your knees you fight your battles in prayer that is why the Bible says the weapons of our warfare they are not carnal they are mighty weapons they are mighty weapons they are mighty weapons somebody say mighty weapons wherefore we need to understand how to engage our enemy because he has been very deceptive very cunning and very crafty no wonder the Bible says be as wise as serpents but as gentle as doves because the enemy you're dealing with was gifted with wisdom even the book of Ezekiel 28 confirms it that he is wiser than Daniel the wisest man uh, in the days of old Daniel, hallelujah. Daniel. And there is no secret which is hidden from him. Wherefore, he knows how to engage you in a battle. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your failures. He is a master at spiritual warfare. For humanity, he has fought humanity fought fellow angels even fought God himself that is the enemy you are dealing with understand I am not exalting him but I am opening your eyes to know what you are dealing with by the time he causes a rebellion in heaven and the third of the angels of God fall along with him sometimes there are rebellions in churches and somebody else may go with some members of the church and somebody else may go with another group of the church 
stupid. It is nothing new. Trust me, we are used to that. Even God has been fighting this battle for a very long time. When Lucifer rebelled, look at the power that he had to convince a third of the angels of God to rebel with him. Hallelujah. 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 By the time he fights fellow angels, and the Bible says, Jude chapter 1 verse number 9 Jude Jude, Jude yes Jude chapter 1 verse number 9 that even Michael the archangel when contending with the devil over the body of Moses he dared not bring against him a reviling accusation but simply said the Lord rebuke you Satan what does that mean? Because Michael the archangel is an archangel. Lucifer as well is an archangel. Not only is he an archangel, but he is the only angel of all the angels of God who occupy two offices. Ezekiel 28 verse number 14 the Bible calls him the anointed cherub that covereth. The anointed cherub that covereth. Not only is he an archangel, but he is also a cherub. There are five divisions of angels in the Bible. Let me say it again. There are five divisions of angels in the Bible. We have the seraphims according to Isaiah chapter number 6. How Isaiah, the Bible says, in the day that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting on the throne high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. The Bible says, then flew unto me one of the seraphims. In Isaiah chapter 6, that's where we see in the whole Bible where seraphims are mentioned. Seraphims reveal the glory of God. They minister the glory of God. The other division is called cherubs. Or cherubims, if you will. Cherubims protect the glory. That is why Ezekiel 28 14, the Bible calls him the anointed cherub that covereth. He was covering the glory of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And, and then Ezekiel chapter 1 talks about the cherubims. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ezekiel chapter number 1. Ezekiel the Bible also talks about the archangels. Gabriel the archangel. Gabriel. Gabriel the archangel. Gabriel Michael the archangel. Archangels do spiritual warfare. And they also minister messages from the throne of God. Gabriel reveals messages unto, unto, unto Mary. Gabriel the Michael the archangel fights spiritual battles. And then there were also angels. Come on, angels have no wings. We could be sitting here in the Aramangas. The book of Hebrews chapter 13. I believe it's number two or somewhere. The Bible says uh, you should not forget to entertain strangers. Some of you have welcomed the angels unawares. Because they come as a common man. Sitting among us. Can we have first time visitors and the angels are sitting among us because they have no wings hallelujah. hallelujah in the bible we see them as young men young men for example in the dying and the resurrection of Jesus Christ they used to appear as young men ladies and gentlemen revelation chapter number 4 talks about the living creatures living creatures hallelujah 
hallelujah those are the five divisions of angels but of all the angels God ever created only one angel had, the, had two offices that even Michael said this guy is higher than me and, and the Bible said Jude chapter 1 he dared not to bring a reviling accusation against this guy called Lucifer because this guy is not only an archangel but he's also a cherub who was once anointed he knows the anointing that is why he fights every anointed man and woman of God because he knows the power of the anointing the church does not understand the power of the anointing ladies and gentlemen by the time Michael says I'm not going to fight the battle with this guy but I need to call on a higher name and say the Lord who is higher than us rebuke you or Satan know the enemy you're dealing with I'm opening your eyes to understand some mysteries the Bible does not call him a toothless lion the Bible calls him a roaring lion a woman. First Peter chapter 5 verse number 8. The Bible says, the Bible says, be sober, be vigilant, because your address with the devil as a roaring lion walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Cutting a You don't want to pray when you're snoring what was time I got a cool and game for a woman the devil wants to divide the devil calls him a, the Bible calls him a roaring lion Bible and we can put on a yeah 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 by the time it's said by the time it's said he has he can divide our churches mighty men of God who are anointed and their churches are torn apart and they go in anger and all of that know the enemy you're dealing with by the time he crucifies God himself to the cross know the enemy you're dealing with by the time he can kill mighty men of God in accidents know the enemy you're dealing with what am I doing right now? Opening your eyes that you may know how to fight the spiritual war. Every city has a beast. Every nation has a beast. Kampala has a beast. Ginger has a beast. Luwelo has a beast. Every city has a beast. America has a beast. The Prince of Persia. Goliath was a beast in the days of a, of a Saul king of Israel Saul king of Israel in as much as he was anointed yet Saul could not deal with Goliath a beast Goliath defied a whole nation one man a giant defied a whole nation in the days of Elijah the beast was called Jezebel she killed all the prophets of God and in their place she made her own prophets I'm trying to help you understand the, the, the beasts have been there from generation to generation in the days of Daniel chapter 10 verse number 13 the Bible says the prince of Persia withstood me for 21 days the prince of Persia withstood stood archangels who are coming down from heaven and one principality has the authority to fight archangels are we going somewhere are we going somewhere I'm capturing your attention now in the days of Moses the beast was called the serpent and spirit no wonder for 430 years 
Pharaoh held the people of God captive. Some of you have been held captive. Families held captive. Churches held captive. And Pharaoh does not want to let you go. But behind Pharaoh was a beast called the serpent and spirit. That is why you would see the Egyptians would wear crowns having a cobra on their heads. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because they are worshipping the serpent and spirit. When God said unto Moses, God tell Pharaoh to let my people go. Why do you think Moses refused to go? Was not because he was a stutterer. As a matter of fact, Moses was never a stutterer. He was just getting excuses. He did not want to go. But he knew the beast I'm going to wrestle with. These are guys who can do counterfeit miracles. The Bible says every, every miracle Moses did. Likewise, the magicians did it. These guys were empowered by something else. No, these guys in the days of Moses, they were empowered by something else. And Moses said, God, send my brother Aaron. Because Moses was scared to face the serpent and beast. And God said unto mothers, I'm going to be with you. I'm speaking about something here. Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. Ladies and gentlemen, along the time, 430 years, yet God told Abraham, it's going to be only 400 years. But an extra 30 years, because the beast could not let them go. It could not release them. Wouldn't release them. Even when Moses came with the rod of God, God told him, I know Pharaoh would not let you go. Because God knew the stubbornness of this spirit. Hallelujah. 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 It took a lot of miracles, signs, and wonders. Just what you get a big you know. My God. Until the beast was broken down. Until the beast was killed. In the days of David. He came as the anointed young boy. The son of Jesse. Anointed with the horn of oil. Anointed with the horn of oil. Not with the value of oil. But with the horn. Okay. I wish I could preach this world the way I feel it. Saul was anointed from a vial. David was anointed from a horn. That shall be for another day. Because many of you are lost now. And I don't want to lose you right now. Let me say it again. Saul was anointed from a vial. A vial means judgment. Yes. In the book of Revelation you will see that the angels of God come with the vials of God with the vials of God containing the wrath of God to bring judgment upon the face of the earth but Luke chapter 1 verse number 69 I believe the Bible says the Lord shall raise up unto us a horn of salvation Jesus was the horn of salvation. David was anointed from a horn. Jesus is a source of your anointing. Je oh God, I wish I, I could preach this word. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, as we go back in scripture, we see somebody shout amen. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just allowing you to reconcile yourself to come back to me right now because I don't want to lose you like I said if we keep on preaching everything you know what is the purpose of me flying all the way thousands of miles away to come here right right 
right so there's got to be a reason why I should fly my airplane to come here to tell you something you don't know hallelujah, hallelujah. somebody shout amen ladies and gentlemen there is a battle going on and Jesus says unto the disciples we need to cross over to the other side we are going over to the other side somebody shout I'm crossing over to the other side there is a church there is a man there is a woman there is a business there is a family that needs to cross over to the other side some shall we are crossing over some shall we are crossing over ladies and gentlemen but as they begin to cross over there is a wind coming there is a storm coming 12 disciples who, are, who, who walked with Jesus in the flesh they beheld God himself and God was with them 12 of them because a ship signifies a ministry a ship signifies a ministry a boat signifies a ministry 12 anointed guys are in a boat but in a boat is a hallelujah that's why to go forward to be gone yet. things are not working. They fasted. They, they fasted. They prayed. They done overnight. They done conferences. But there was a prevailing. Twelve anointed guys. They are trying to run moving forward. But the wind is blowing contrary. Why? Because where they were going, there was a guy. This one man, Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. One man who was filled with 6,000 demons. My God. This man kept God over the city of the gatherings. Let me break it down for you. When the Lord came to the other side, the demons identified Jesus. The demons identified Jesus. And they said, What have we to do with you? Thou Jesus Christ, Son of the Living God. And they said, I adjure you by God that you torment me not. But and, and the Lord says, What is your name? And the guy said, My name is Legion. For, for we are many. Uh, we are many. What does the name of Legion mean? Legion was used in the Roman army. Yes, in the Roman army. In the days of Jesus, one rank of legion had 6,000 soldiers. When the guy said, my name is Legion, a soldier is not a civilian. A soldier is not on your level. A soldier has been trained. I, I think the motto of the soldiers in Uganda, the motto, the motto, is to serve and to protect, isn't it? To serve and to protect. Right? I don't know if that, that's what it is. Thank you. So what do they do? Soldiers guard. This guy had 6,000 demons in him. God in the whole territory. The, and the Bible said, no man could tell him no evangelist could tell him no apostle could tell him no man could tell him because for some times they tried to bind him with chains and feathers and he brought them asunder and he came back in rage sometimes we fast and pray as pastors and my things are better Back in the, power to take over the, the Bible says this guy, his name was called Legion. Legion, we are, we are 6,000 of us. We've been deployed in this territory. The country of the gatherings. The country of the gatherings. Yeah, 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 yeah. I feel like preaching. The country of the gatherings. I said the country of the gatherings. 
And they said, and they said, we adjure you by God that torment us not. We don't mind if you cast us out of the man as long as you don't send us out of the town. Because we got a mission in Kampala. We got a mission in Wakiso. We got a mission in America. Demons got territories. They guard and protect countries. And no church could open up in that region. Because one guy has been empowered by the devil. Oh, yes, he's been empowered by the devil to guard the whole city. The man was fierce. And the country became a wilderness. The country even became a wilderness. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And no church was in that area. No business could thrive in that area. And they say, You may try that in Kampala. But don't try that in my rural forest. Because we are God in this territory. So Jesus needed to go over to the. Uh, why did he need to go over so he could open up the city to revival so he could deliver the whole city there is an anointing when he does not deliver cities somebody shout hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah can I break it down for you John chapter 4 verse number 3 and verse number 4 the bible says in verse number 4 that Jesus said I must needs go through Samaria in verse number 3 he was going to Galilee and it, it's a short way by the way and it is a very short way but it says I need to go through Samaria in as much as Samaria I have to go around but I need to go through Samaria why? because Samaria had been shut down for spiritual revival there was no church in Samaria there were no fellowships in Samaria there were no overnights in Samaria and the Lord said, I must needs. I need to go through Samaria. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We need to do a conference in, in MTN Arena. That is why there is a turning point today. Your church will be free. Your city will be free. Your family will be free. Uganda will be free. From the sorcerers who are tormenting Uganda. Uganda will be free. From the false prophets. Uganda will be free. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. I must needs go through Samaria. Samaria. Why? Why? Remember first Kings. First Kings chapter 16. Verse number 30. Verse number 30. The Bible says. And Ahab did wickedness in the sight of the Lord. She was the son of Omri. He did evil in the sight of the Lord. More than all of them which were before him. First Kings 16 verse number 31. And the Bible says. As though it had been a light thing. As though it had been a light thing. For him to walk in the sins of Jeroboam the son of Nebat. He went and married Jezebel. The daughter of Ethbal. And worshipped Baal and served Baal. First Kings 1632. The Bible says. And Ahab royal an altar for Baal in Samaria. He read a temple and an altar for Baal in Samaria. Somebody shout amen. Go to verse number 33. Go to verse number 33. And the Bible says, And Ahab made an image. And Ahab did more to provoke the Lord God of Israel to anger more than the kings which were before him. Now, notice in verse number 34. The Bible says, In his days, did Ahio the Bethelite. 
did a high of the Bethelite got to build Jericho and the Bible says he laid the foundation thereof in the, in the sacrifice of his firstborn son and the gates in his lastborn son called Segab right the Bible says it was in the days of Ahab at this point they, they, they legalized human sacrifices it became a legal law in Israel that you can take your children and sacrifice them because Jezebel had come into town and she killed all the prophets of God and even the king himself built an altar for, for, for Baal then the king legalized to do human sacrifices just like in America recently we had a president who legalized gay marriages leaders are against they open up a city or they shut the city Barack Obama opened America to, to perversion yes I know we like him but he opened America to perversion to sodomy he, he, he opened America to sodomy presidents are gates he, he, he signed a law into the constitution that behold a man can marry a fellow man it became legal presidents are gates that is why I like president Museveni because he said no I refuse to sell Uganda to sodomy he said no I'm not giving my nation the offer to the devil somebody shout hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah so in the days of Ahab human sacrifices they become legal and they gave the city over to the devil and there was no prophet who could open Samaria back to God it had to take God himself coming down in the place John chapter 1 verse number 14 when the world became flesh and dwelt among us John 4 verse number 4 I must needs go through Samaria to redeem Samaria from the devil oh, no, 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 ah, yeah, 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 yeah. to redeem Samaria oh, from no, the no, work no, of Samaria wickedness Samaria. somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah, hallelujah. we redeem Uganda from sorcery and witchcraft we redeem Uganda from the false prophets we redeem Uganda from the works of wickedness we redeem oh God this is why I come here this is why I come here that together you and I you and I that we may redeem Uganda and there shall be a turning point there shall be a turning point somebody shout hallelujah Somebody shout hallelujah. Say God free my nation. Somebody shout God free my nation. Lord free my family. Lord free my city. Somebody shout hallelujah. Jesus must needs go through Samaria. Yes, I know it is Samaria. Can I break it down? Remember Acts chapter number 8. The Bible says, and Philip went down to Samaria. Why did he go down to Samaria? Because Jesus Christ had gone before him. And there was revival in Samaria. There was revival in Samaria. The preaching of the world became easy for Philip. Because somebody went before him. Because somebody went before him. Pastors. Pastors. I know you, you have churches. I know you pray for your churches. That, that they may increase. Why? Because some cities have been closed off to the government. The 
it's not your fault pastors oh yeah because people have a tendency to blame the pastors this church has been here for a long time in the last 10 years you've been a pastor you should be so far away but you have no idea somebody already dedicated the whole city to the devil before I can build the church of God Jeremiah chapter 1 verse number 10 I've set you over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out the works of the devil to pull down sources and witchcraft to destroy to break down before you can build and plant have you taken time to pull down because many of us are building upon satanic foundations because a city is already in the hands of the devil you need to first redeem the city back and then you can build the house of God then you can build the house of God Zechariah chapter 4 verse number 9 that says the Lord God unto Zerubbabel the hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundations of this house because the Rubabel labored for Israel. The Rubabel labored. He laid the foundation. But how did he lay the foundation? By destroying the, the altars of wickedness. We need to destroy the altars of wickedness. And open our cities back unto God. Someone shout hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. Tell somebody, neighbor, in the name of Jesus, in this conference, just see it will be open back to God. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Yeah. Back of Wagamba, back of Wagamba. Tell your neighbor. In the name of Jesus. I'm opening it. 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 Who am I preaching to in here? Who am I preaching to in here? Jesus, therefore, needed to go to the city of the gatherings that he may open up the city to the gospel that there can be revival again. If you look in the same scripture, Jesus Christ only delivered the man and went out. Because he knew the mission was over. My God. Lord, Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Because you know the mission has been done. When he gets to that city. And he opens it up. You and me. It will be easy for us to minister. Mean into every city where he himself was to go. Why did they go two by two? Before the presence of Jesus these guys have been anointed to go to root out things think about some cities the Lord simply walked in and virtue was coming out of them and simply virtue virtue was simply coming out of him because the disciples went before him two by two apostle Chimole this is why I honor your man of God I was so shocked Men of God don't usually do conferences. And they allow the young pastors in their churches to preach on the conferences. But what the man of God was doing, he was allowing the disciples to go to higher. Somebody shout amen. When Pastor Solomon was here, and then he. So, these are the guys who open up the cities. These are the guys who open up the cities. When you are a pastor, you fail to give up the pole. What you don't know is you're closing the cities to yourself. Oh, 
hallelujah. Yes. Somebody shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Because pastors, we have a tendency. Because we are so scared. Because people come in our churches. They show us they are faithful. But eventually they tear up our churches. Hallelujah. hallelujah. So it takes a whole lot so to surrender my platform to somebody I don't quite frankly trust. But it's impossible to work with people you don't trust. Now let me break it down for you. If you're a disciple and you have an apostle over you or you have a pastor over you go to Genesis chapter 49 Genesis chapter 49 verse number 3 and verse number 4 so I can help you disciples hallelujah, hallelujah. I need to help you disciples Genesis Genesis 49 verse number 3 and 4 what does this everybody Reuben everybody you were my firstborn, my might, and the beginning of my strength, the excellency of, and of, of dignity, and the excellency of power. Verse number four, everybody. Unstable as water, you shall not excel. Because you went up to your father's bed, then you defiled it. He went up onto my couch. Lord, have mercy. Well, come on. Sometimes we have disciples. Come with me. Sometimes we have disciples. And we train them. Like I said, by the time comes. Now the ones that they are more anointed than their pastor. And they think they can outpress their pastors. They can outpress their pastors. And they think they can outpress their pastors. They can outpress their pastors. Let me break it down for you. The Lord says, Never know God, no glory can answer. Unstable as water shall be your ministry. Young churches which are built upon the right foundation. If you leave your pastor in rebellion, you will be unstable as water. Water is always moving as waves. The church grows. The church grows and the church dies. Today it increases. Tomorrow it dies again. Because you went up to your father's bed. And you defiled your father's bed. Not only did you do that. You also defiled his couch. What does that mean? You didn't do it once Reuben. You did it more than once. That's what it means you went also into my couch. The birthright belonged unto Reuben, the firstborn. Reuben, the birthright. But because it defiled, assuming you're my pastor, and I leave you in rebellion, will you pass on the mantle to me? Somebody say amen. Somebody say amen. The reason Elisha becomes Elisha. Even when Elijah was, was weak. Even when you're going to talk about Elijah. Elisha was I shall be with you. Yeah, men of God are not perfect. But it is your responsibility as a disciple. To shield your Elijah. Ladies and gentlemen, now look at the third born called Judah. He takes the birthright. Some of us would not be pastors today. But somebody defiled their father's bed. Now that's how some of us come in. And we took the birthright. Somebody say amen. Now tell your neighbor. Tell your fellow church member. Never defile our daddy's bed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Am I preaching to somebody today? Because when we raise up disciples, but you know, they should be greater than us. Elisha did more than Elijah. John 14, verse number 12. 
John 14 verse number 12 The works that I do shall you do also And greater works than this Because I'm going away So when I go away And I leave my mantle My predecessors should do more They should do a whole lot more Hallelujah Men of God I honor you pastor Because now these are going before you two by two Yeah 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 two by two and the Bible says in, in, in Luke chapter 10 verse number 2 that the, the harvest is truly plentiful but the laborers are so few pray though for the Lord of the harvest that he would send forth laborers into his vineyard God does not have laborers he, he has a few laborers he has many pastors many apostles many prophets that's not his problem he has many of those but a few laborers who are still laboring with the right cause with the right cause nowadays everybody wants fame nowadays everybody wants a love offering when I come to your church how much are you giving me I know it is ministry protocol I, I know it is ministry protocol but it should not be our first agenda our first agenda is to labor for the kingdom of God I have sought for myself a man after my own heart a man who is not after women who is not after money who is not after fame a man who is after the heart of God when, when you give God your heart God shall give you the nations God shall give you the nations if you wake up in the morning you, you make God number one and you begin to shine the like a day you make him number one in your life he shall make you number one everywhere you go somebody shout hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah Jesus has needed to go through the city of the gathering because this city had been bound oh yeah demons were, were, were God in the city there was no church in that entire area because one witch one sorcerer how can one sorcerer hinder 12 disciples 12 disciples they have walked with Jesus in the flesh they have been trained by God himself they didn't go to MUK they didn't go to Makere University. University. They went to a school of theology called Jesus. And God himself trained them. But they could not open the city. Some of us are laboring in our own power. Yet the Lord is sleeping in the boat. He's still in the ministry. You're still rowing with your own power. Laboring with your own power. Lord, we have labored all night long and called nothing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mark 16 verse number 20. The Bible says, and they went forth and they preached everywhere. The Bible says, and the Lord was working with them. Confirming the world with signs and wonders. There should be evidence that God is working with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord was working with them. Some of you, you're so anointed, but you're not using the anointing you have. This is why God brought you here. That He may, that this may be your turning point. That He may anoint you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First Samuel chapter 10, verse number 6. When you leave this place, you shall find a company of the prophets. Thou shalt prophesy along with them. And you shall be turned into another man. 
when the Holy Ghost comes upon a ministry it shall be turned into another ministry not a regular ministry not a common ministry See, I am no longer a common man of God because I'm anointed by God I am a new man I'm a different man of God somebody shout hallelujah hey. 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 Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Oh yeah. By the end of this conference, you will, you will be another woman. You will be another man. God is giving you a new heart. You shall be turned into another man. By the time you go back to your house, your wife shall look at you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Husband, when you go back to your house, your wife will look at you and say, look what the Lord has done. And your wife shall be the someone to say, please go and support Pastor Chimole. Go support the conference. Because every time you go, you come back as a new man. I need a new husband. I need a new wife. Somebody shout, I need something new. I need something new. I need I need something new. Back up, my neighbor. Tell your neighbor. My God, turn you into another man. My God, turn you into another person. Tell somebody, neighbor. My God, turn you into another person this day. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, when we kill, but, but, when we kill but, but, the territorial beast which has been ruling over Kampala, our churches will grow. When we kill the territorial beast which has been causing accidents, taking people from our churches, causing people not to give tithes and offerings, our churches will go to another level. Can I help you, pastors? Pastors, can I help you? Do you know there is a spirit it's a beast that causes people not to give tithes and offerings in as much as they have money when they try to raise up a seed they will never sow into the ministry what is that spirit called simple this is what the bible calls religious spirits when people are bound by religion and you bring another doctrine of sowing the seed they will say now the pastor wants to buy, to buy another new car now you're all quiet because they are bound by religious spirits. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible says, Second Timothy 3, verse number 5. Having a form of godliness, denying the power thereof. We know how to speak in tongues. But the someone only that can speak in tongues is the someone only that can cause you to sow seeds in this conference. Hallelujah. But religion will tell you the pastor has nice suits. Behold his wife. She has a new, a new hairstyle. When I give my little money I have today, I shall be so broke, busted, and disgusted. And the pastor will be getting richer and richer. So pastors, so pastors, when you deal with the religious spirit in your church, the people will be free free to worship free to give because where the spirit of the living God is there is a liberty liberty to soar into the ministry somebody shout hallelujah somebody shout hallelujah there is another beast it is called Jezebel when Jezebel came in Israel she brought, she brought in perversion of all kinds sexual perversion suddenly suddenly people 
people were dressing wickedly people began to lust after one another the spirit of Jezebel the book of Revelation talks about it I think chapter 2 verse number 20 somewhere I might be wrong on the quotation but the Lord says that uh, uh, Jezebel she taught my servants to commit sexual immorality and to eat things sacrificed unto idols I gave her time to repent and she did not behold I will cast her into a sick bed and they that commit sexual perversion with her unless they repent of their deeds so when we have church members who dress in skimpy clothes showing their packages no 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 now you're quiet hallelujah let me preach as it is the good thing we can definitely so let me preach as it is pastor can I preach it on hallelujah so when you come to our sanctuaries showing us your packages yes I know you got a good package but spare our brothers our brothers want to worship God in spirit and in truth and they are lasting over your back they are lasting over your legs we have the right to put them in the spirit and you are putting them in the spirit the devil is a liar that is Jezebel we need to kill Jezebel we need to kill Jezebel. The beast called Jezebel has got to die today. In the name of Jesus. Somebody shout hallelujah. Yes, I know. Trust me, where I come from, it's even worse. <laughs> Who can you advise eh? to put you? If they, you uh, try to speak to them, yeah. they don't come back to church. Where I come from? Jemba. Who do you preach such a word to? Because when you preach such a raw gospel unto them, they will say, Tomorrow I'm not going to give my tithes and offerings. And I'll see how you shall survive. Tomorrow I'm not going to come back unto your church. And I'll see who will support you. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you a secret. When the devil shuts one door, God has seven other doors he can open up. God can bring more people who are more anointed than you. Who are not rebellious. Who don't have Jezebel. Yet they got money. Oh yeah. What you think it is? Somebody shout hallelujah. Somebody shout hallelujah. That's why the Bible says, I am the door. Yes, we are Luji. Yes, he's the door. No, nobody, no man is a door. No person if you think you shut a door for me, well, I, was door. I shall go to the door itself. Jesus himself. Yes, and the door shall open every other door. John 14 verse number 6. I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you shut your way, I shall go to the way himself. Ah, you are quiet. 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 You live the church. You see the Lord raising a powerful woman more than you. <laughs> I am boxing and overdoing. The Lord has got his seven thousand. He has got his seven thousand. God has his seven thousand. All the knees. All the knees who have not bowed down unto Jezebel. Who have not bowed down unto Baal.